Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. I recommend checking out the first video. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube is ddarko2012-2013. In the last video we mentioned, what, values. We started with values and pretty much ended with values. Um, basically with Obama's claim saying that 9-11 revived American values. And some of those values are what was uh, stress, depression, and drug abuse after 9-11. And this was, of course, uh, because of what? Repeated exposure to traumatic images of 9-11 and terrorist attacks. It was being shoved down their throats, including Jack Bauer terrors, uh, terrorizing and torturing people in the name of fighting terrorism on Fox. Another crappy, the one millionth uh, um, uh, law enforcement show. Uh, I don't have television, but if I go to someone else's house, that's all I see is nothing but fucking cop shows about fighting terrorists and stupid murderers and shit that would most likely never really ever happen in reality. But they want you to stay in the false reality, right? And they're talking about American values, right? So now the kids' book of freedom. So they can put out the propaganda, rewrite the history, that it wasn't the Zionists that helped uh, create this, uh, this uh, horrible event. That it was Muslim extremists because Muslims hate us because we're so free. I, I, that's, that is really what it comes down to. We were attacked by Islam because we're so free. So American values were uh, basically waiting almost a decade to help people that actually volunteered and helped to uh, respond to these uh, false flag attacks, right? Uh, they were left out to dry for a long time. And then they were even treated like terrorists. Some of these other uh, values were more surveillance spying, wiretaps, which they've always been doing before 9-11. The NSA spying on you, the NSA admitting that they're spying on you, uh, facial recognition across America under the Patriot Act in order to fight the terrorists. The irony being that most of this intelligence and surveillance, uh, these corporations and the actual hard intelligence goes through the real terrorists, the Zionists, that are actually holding this information, the ones that actually carried out the terrorist attacks of 9-11. And of course, some of these more values is to take more of your freedoms, right? Spying on you, facial recognition, the airports, uh, spying on now targeting Muslims like we did in World War II with the Japanese putting them into concentration camps, right? So now the CIA aids the uh, local police uh, to spy on Muslims. We torture people now and leave them in there to die and rot, basically, even after they were cleared by a court. Uh, the FBI promises martyrdom payments for people that uh, say they're going to go ahead and uh, carry out a suicide attack, even though and more values are what? Our uh, FBI informants. So you got sting operations to create the illusion of these terrorists. Uh, FBI informants back in the 60s even with the Black Panthers to radicalize them and carry out violence. Uh, infiltrating the Occupy movement uh, to do what? To go on there and be more aggressive, to be more violent. So they want you to do this. This is what they want. They, they, they act as if they don't want this, right? Software meant to fight crime is used to spy on dissidents. Well, that's what it's meant to spy on. Uh, originally, you know, put, go ahead and put your uh, tweet something, right? Well, just like Facebook, you could be put in jail or lose your job, which people have. Talking about values, CNN comparing protesters to terrorists, insurgents, uh, having drones, uh, having uh, TSA at uh, these uh, Democratic Republican National Conventions along with the police state post 9-11, all in the name of terror. But the real terrorists, people that are carrying out all these uh, torturing operations of these people that are, you know, clear like on Guantanamo, that are actually given immunity, right? Nothing happens to them. They have weak allegations. Nothing will happen to them in Britain as well. This, of course, is a divide and conquer strategy used by certain entity groups. So someone calling himself a religious leader, a preacher, Terry Jones, the man responsible for blaspheming the prophet Muhammad, he has made threats before, burned the Holy Quran, spouted obscenities, demanded attention, has acted with demonic intent. He released this week a streaming video on his website attacking Islam and purposely attempting to incite violence against the U.S. The timing of the video on an obscure website that is nearly impossible to find and its release to the Middle East was no accident. This was very much an attempt on the part of the political forces to harm the images of the United States and was only part of a much larger conspiracy, which is right. Jones is a spy, CIA-trained, run, run by rogue handlers, and heavily promoted by Mossad elements throughout the Middle East, unable to garner national news attention in the U.S. when anyone else of his minor following and total lack of credibility would be ignored. So this is, of course, right around 9-11. Zionists behind 9-11. Now, all of a sudden, you got this stupid video 
uh, that's out right around this time. And this is, of course, going back to what I covered last, what, Thursdays, videos and Wednesdays, which is what they're doing is part of this is, uh, Israeli expansion is that they have to appear as if there is the whole world of Islam is going to get them, right? And that's the only way they're going to get the U.S. to back them to strike Iran or whatever else they're trying to do, which is to expand. And that's why they have these little proxy states like Egypt around them, uh, with these puppet regimes, quote, of the Arab Spring, uh, that they're going to use and they're going to play, right? Jones moved to Germany in 81, established a religious cult, thus his ties while there were Israeli intelligence and the P2 Masonic Lodge. And lastly, Jones is part of this operation tasked with destabilizing Egypt and Libya, tasked with providing Islamophobic backdrop for Natianu's visit to the United Nations. Anti-Islam movie directed, produced by Israeli-American. This is really interesting because it's like when I started looking for news today, it just... I was like, well, I want to find out who is actually behind this movie. And then it came out that he's actually a Zionist. The Wall Street Journal reported on Tuesday that Israeli-American Sam Basile had directed and produced a blasphemous movie. He's 52 years old, a real estate developer living in Southern California and a sworn enemy of Islam. He assumed responsibility for the film, which he said was made thanks to Jewish donations totaling $5 million. Earlier, a staff member of the U.S. consulate in eastern Libyan city of Benghazi was killed and one security guard injured during clashes triggered over the anti-Islam film. And another Western illuminist, this guy keeps going, right? Pat Robertson, Muslims go crazy because they have the spirit of a wild donkey. And I think he actually put out another quote just recently uh, saying that uh, if you can convert to Muslims so that you can beat your wife. So, of course, when, when he says this, of course, it's all Christians that are saying this, not that he's a Zionist shill, right, or a luminous shill. Pakistan condemns insulting anti-Islam film. So Pakistan is the first one, well, not the first one, but they're one of them uh, countries that are out there uh, speaking out against it. Afghan president condemns American anti-Islam movie. Palestinians burn U.S. flag in protest against anti-Islam movie. Uh, Hezbollah condemns U.S. film insulting Islam. So basically everybody, right? U.S. embassies in Algeria, Tunisia warn of protest after this. You have Natiano. U.S. has no moral right to block Israeli strike on Iran. So I think this is what it has a lot to do with, is that they're not able to go ahead with their little strike. So they have a temper tantrum and they release stuff like this and get everybody infuriated. Of course, it also um, rallies people around their little puppets that they have set up there as well. Uh, this little buffer proxy states that I was talking about around uh, Israel and that. So he does say that the uh, United States has no moral right to object to an Israeli military strike on Iran. Natianu trying to overthrow Obama, says Israeli opposition leader. Israeli meddling in internal U.S. affairs and turning the U.S. administration or regime from an ally to an enemy has caused a severe damage. Talking about Natianu's uh, seeding fear and panic among Israeli people over Iran's issue. So this is what you get, right? Moroccan protesters chant, death to Obama. So we're just talking about Natianu trying to overthrow Obama, or basically uh, demonize him for not going along with it. And now all of a sudden you have uh, the Middle Eastern world and um, uh, Muslims chanting death to Obama. So see how that works. Then you have the Vatican condemning U.S.-made anti-Islam movie. The Vatican is strongly condemned as provocations against Muslims, a film made in the U.S. that is deemed as offensive uh, to Islam's prophet Muhammad. The Pope is calling uh, Christians, calling on Christians not to flee the Middle East for September 12th. And so the whole thing in Egypt happened, what, post this, you know, uh, little preview for this film coming out on YouTube. And then they started tearing down the flags. Well, Cairo protesters raised Al-Qaeda flag over U.S. embassy. Egyptian Islamists from September 11, 2012, protesting a film they found disrespectful to Muhammad, raised the flag of the terror group Al-Qaeda over the United States embassy in Cairo Tuesday. So several news outlets refer to this merely as a black flag or Islamist flag, which I've seen in other, um, uh, other sources as well. But it says that uh, Al-Qaeda also adopted this flag as their flag. So it says here, Congressman Embassy attack in Libya was coordinated. So intelligence and community are saying that the attack in Libya that killed U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others in Benghazi was a coordinated attack. Well, if it was a coordinated attack, there's a good chance that it was their buddies, Al-Qaeda, who also raised the flag in Libya after they overthrew Gaddafi. Uh, but it could just be blowback. 
It could just be blowback from um, uh, from the re release of that film and stuff like that. Uh, is the Libyan attack on the U.S. consulate the work of Al-Qaeda? Well, remember this. Thanks to Obama, the Al-Qaeda flag is now flying high and proud over Libya. Libya officials said Gaddafi loyalists killed U.S. diplomats. So now the officials, the uh, the international community and news propaganda pieces are putting out that it's actually Gaddafi loyalists that killed the diplomats. But then we go to this news source, which I really do like and appreciate. U.S. backed terrorists murder U.S. own ambassador in Libya. Murdered U.S. ambassador exposes U.S. pro-democracy foreign policy. Same terrorist U.S. backs in Syria are behind the murder of U.S. ambassador in Libya. So here's actually a picture of uh, him, uh, Mr. John Stevens, ambassador for the U.S., along with Senator John McCain in Libya. Now remember, John McCain, same guy that was up there at the forefront with Libya, you know, got to arm the rebels, got to arm Al-Qaeda. Then again, it's known in Syria that, what, well, it's Al-Qaeda, and um, that the West is arming them. And uh, McCain was at the forefront again, right at the beginning, months ago, saying we got to arm the, we got to arm the rebels. So... Uh, the same people that are responsible for killing this man, the U.S. ambassador, is the same people that McCain called for arming. So you could just see the um, uh, uh, the big picture there. And just some background uh, about this uh, anti-Islam uh, film. So they're most likely using the neocon uh, Clarion Fund as propaganda film as a pretense for violence long planned. The Clarion Fund regularly produces anti-Muslim propaganda like Iranium, specifically to maintain a strategy of tension using fear and anger to drive a wedge between Western civilization and Islam to promote perpetual global wars of profit. So there's no doubt in my mind that Libya, which has already been a uh, hub for smuggling arms and weapons into other countries and recruiting terrorists and, and, and training them, will now be used for what? For the Marines uh, who are just dispatched to Libya uh, to basically use that as another springboard to Syria. So I think there's a bigger overarching um, theme here going on, which is uh, they're not getting what they want, which is Israel, the Zionists, and the West, who are basically at, at their beck and call, which is to bring down the Syrian regime. And they're not getting that yet. So officials are calling it a Marine fast team sent from the U.S. naval base Road of Spain. They're expected to go to Tripoli. Then, as I was recording, just about to record, I noticed this uh, propaganda piece in Yahoo, Yahoo's news uh, thing. It says, Ambassador Chris Stevens killed in Libya. Is Arab Spring turning against the United States? Well, they helped create it. So the flare-up of anti-U.S. violence, which Ambassador Chris Stevens was killed in Libya, shows how the Arab Spring has unleashed forces in the region that are vehemently opposed to America and its ideals. Of course, this is, again, this is written by the... This is written by think tanks. These are written by the, all these round tables. They want to create this anti-American sentiment to bring it down, to bring down a nationalist states, and to bring in this global government. It's weird. They want to kill America while at the same time use it as the heartbeat for this global police force. So you can see uh, who's pushing this crap, right? Uh, this is Patrick Clausen, director of research at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy in Washington. Well, he's it probably isn't even coming from his own mind. He's just reiterating uh, what was already written and proposed in these uh, little consortiums and think tanks and stuff like that. It's not a good dynamic, but it's not going away. It has to be addressed. And it's, it, it is kind of interesting because they say, they, they say uh, it's how to adjust to a world where moderate Muslim governments have paved the way we're talking about the Arab Spring for more extremist elements to wield their influence. Now, the, the irony here is that that is that Syria and, and, and Libya were actually somewhat moderate Muslim governments, whereas what they have in place now in Egypt and Libya are extremist elements. Man, it's wild. Cutting Iran ties lames Canada as Zionist lackey, says analyst. So he's referring to the recent move that uh, Canada did where they basically told Iran's uh, embassy and their diplomats to leave. It says it's a stain on the short Canadian history which unveils Ottawa's submissive stance towards the Zionist sway. So talking about these proxy states, uh, Israel needs and wants a direct threat or indirect threat of Islamist, Islam, Islamist extremist states, right? So they can go on a preemptive attack. But at the same time, they want to be able to pull their strings. Egypt's president trying to persuade Iran to drop Assad with promises of easing isolation. Despite sanctions, the International Energy Agency says demand for Iranian oil has increased. And Iran's president says enemies destroy Iran's rain clouds. Father of Pakistan's nuclear bomb could be country's next president. 
while Pakistan and China pledge to stand united. Thank you.